So the purpose of this video is going to be to hopefully help you to understand how the supply and demand curve work together, how they interact, and how the equilibrium price changes as one or the other shifts, as well as how government controls can affect your equilibrium price. Um, so what we have here on the screen is the supply and demand for milk, uh, more specifically traditional milk from a cow. Uh, notice that curve A, downward sloping, is our demand curve because as the price goes down, your quantity increases. So that's demand. As price goes down, your quantity goes up. Curve B is our supply curve uh, because curve B is upward sloping, meaning that as the price goes up, your supply goes up because producers want to produce more when there's more of a profit to be made. Um, on curve A and curve B, our equilibrium point, our equilibrium price is $4. And at $4, 4 million gallons of milk are being demanded by consumers and 4 million gallons of milk are being supplied by producers. So we have no shortage, no surplus. Our demand is being met by our supply. Everything's working out perfectly at that equilibrium of $4. Now, if your supply or your demand were to shift uh, either left or right, that's going to affect this equilibrium price. So let's start with the demand curve. So let's say that for some reason uh, our demand increases. Maybe you know some of the things we talked about, determinants of demand, maybe population increases. <clears throat> maybe the income of, our con of consumers goes up. Um, those are two things that could cause your demand curve to shift to the right. <clears throat> if that happens, uh, in this example, we'd shift from curve A to curve Z which is going to increase our price because notice that nothing's changed with supply. We're still on the same supply curve. Um, so if we go up to this point now with that, with our new increased demand, our equilibrium price is going to increase because our, our available supply did not change. Our supply curve didn't shift left or right. We just moved to a new point on the same curve and our demand shifted to the right increasing. So with the higher demand, but the supply not changing, the price needs to go up. So now the equilibrium price is going to be $5. Um, and at $5 a gallon, producers are willing to make five, or willing to produce five million gallons of milk. Um, consumers are going to demand it at the new higher demand. So this will be our new equilibrium price of $5 where supply meets demand. Uh, let's say that the opposite happens. So let's say that your demand decreases. Anytime your demand decreases, that's going to cause your price to go down, assuming that supply doesn't change. Um, so let's say, you know, one of the things that can shift uh, demand, one of the determinants of demand is the price and availability of substitutes. So a substitute for traditional cow milk would be things like, you know, soy milk, almond milk, goat milk. Um, these are all potential substitutes for milk from a cow. Uh, so if the, if the availability of those increases or if the price for any of those goes down, that's going to decrease our demand for cow milk. So in this example, we would shift from curve A to curve C. Again, supply has not changed. Uh, producers are still operating on the same supply curve. So that means that now our equilibrium price is going to be $3. And at $3 a gallon, we're going to have $3 million gallons of milk that are being demanded and producers can meet that demand with their available supply. So our new equilibrium price then with the decreased demand is $3. Um, let's look at the supply curve shifting then. So again, su supply curve is curve B. Um, and let's talk about what happens when that shifts, uh, shifts left or right. So um, let's talk about uh, an increase in supply with no change in demand. Some things that could cause curve B to shift to curve Y, increase in your supply. Um, one of those things would be the, the price of our inputs. So, you know, an input to producing cow, obviously there's labor. You have to hire people to, to work um, to work with the cows. You need feed, you know, to feed your cows, especially during the winter when maybe there's not available grazing land. Let's say that the price for that feed goes down. So now you can get that feed cheaper. It's now, you know, if you are a dairy farmer, now it's it costs less for you to produce your milk. So now you're going to be willing to supply more. Um, so if we, if our, if our supply for uh, cow milk increases, we're going to shift from curve B to curve Y, and that's going to cause our equilibrium price to decrease. So we now have 
more milk that's being supplied, but we're still operating on the same demand curve. So our equilibrium price went from $4 a gallon to $3 a gallon. And of course, the opposite you know, could also happen. Um, something that would cause our supply to decrease or shift to the left. Um, one of the things that one of the things that um, shifts your supply curve is the number of firms in an industry. So let's say that you have some large dairy farms that go out of business. Uh, you know, so some people that were producing cow milk are no longer producing milk. That's going to uh, shift your supply curve to the left because there's going to be less milk produced at every possible price. Um, if demand hasn't changed though, so if we're still on curve A for demand, when we shift uh, so the, the supply curve from curve B to curve D, now your equilibrium prices went up from $4 a gallon to $5 a gallon. Again, because now we're on curve D and curve A, equilibrium price is now higher than it was before. Um, one of the other things that we covered in this uh, section of notes was price controls. So the examples I just gave are examples of how the market operates in a, in a free market economy if there's no government intervention. Um, sometimes the government does intervene, though, for various reasons, maybe to protect consumers. Uh, example of that you, you see in real life right now um, with the government trying to limit price gouging for, for things that are in high demand like um, hand sanitizer, toilet paper, face masks. Um, all those things that there's a huge demand for right now, but the supply hasn't really caught up. You know, in a free market economy, when your demand goes up and your supply doesn't change, that's going to increase the price, um, you know, in some cases very dramatically. So the, the government is trying to, um, you know, limit that price gouging, limit those prices and cre increases as much as possible. Um, let's apply that same concept to our supply and demand curves here to milk. So let's say that consumers want to make sure that milk is available for everybody who wants it, right? So they say no more selling milk for over $2 a gallon. This would be a price ceiling. So a price ceiling limits how high the price of a good can go. <clears throat> so in this instance, we have a price ceiling of $2 a gallon. Um, let's say that we're operating on curve A and B. So without any price ceilings, without any government intervention, our equilibrium price is $4 a gallon. So at $4 a gallon, demand is being met by the available supply, but the government steps in and says, you can't sell milk for more than $2 a gallon. At this $2 a gallon on curve A, consumers are going to demand more, right? Because if it costs less, consumers are going to want more of it. So at $2 a gallon, consumers are demanding 6 million gallons of milk. But at a lower price, you know, there's some dairy farmers that can't make a profit at $2 a gallon, so they're not going to be as willing to supply milk. So we're going to shift down to, or sorry, we don't shift, but we just move on the same curve on curve B down to $2 a gallon over here. And at $2 a gallon, suppliers are only going to be willing to supply 2 million gallons of milk because there's going to be things that they could do that are more profitable. Maybe that involves, you know, selling their, their cows for beef instead of milk. Um, now there's a gap here between our supply and demand with this price ceiling. So demand is 6 million, supply is 2 million. So what you're going to have then is a shortage of 4 million gallons of milk. So we have 4 million gallons of milk that are being demanded, but can't be met with the available supply because producers aren't finding it profitable to make, to produce 6 million gallons of milk. Um, the other side of this would be a price floor. So let's say that um, the government wanted to, to, to protect producers. So instead of prote protecting consumers, they want to protect dairy farmers. So let's say that, you know, they want to make sure that, you know, dairy farmers can still operate, that there's pr plenty of profits to be made. So they might set a price floor at $5 a gallon. So again, let's assume that we're operating on curve A and B with a free market equilibrium point of $4, where 4 million gallons of milk were being produced and demanded. With this new price floor that the government set, um, at these higher prices, what's going to happen is consumers are going to demand less because consumers are not going to buy as much milk at $5 a gallon as they did at $4 a gallon. On the other hand, if producers see this price floor and they know that they're going to be making a minimum of $5 a gallon on milk, they're going to start producing more. So we have suppliers that are producing 5 million gallons of milk. We have consumers that are only demanding 3 million gallons of milk. 
what we have here is a surplus. So there's going to be a surplus of 2 million gallons of milk that are being produced, but not bought by consumers. Um, and again, this what's going to happen here is that milk is probably going to get dumped, um, you know, because because the government's not allowing people to sell milk for less than five dollars a gallon. In a free market economy with no government restrictions, if you have a surplus, what happens is the price goes down until you get to a point where that whole surplus is bought up. Because if something is cheap enough, somebody's going to go buy it. Um, but again, if the government sets these, in this case, a, a price floor, which is a restriction on the, on the free market, when the government does that, that, that creates unnecessary, in this case, is un, not an unnecessary surplus, um, which again, farmers would probably just have to dump because there's not demand for this milk at $5 a gallon. Um, we, we mentioned it a little bit in your assignment, but if the if the government were to set a price floor below the equilibrium point, so let's say that they set a price floor of $2 a gallon, that's not going to change anything in, in this instance if we're using curves A and B because our equilibrium price is $4 a gallon. The floor, it can't go below the floor. The price can't go below $2 a gallon. Um, in this case, that's not going to change anything. So, you know, we're already not selling milk for l less than $2 a gallon, so it won't affect us. Same thing if it was a price ceiling that was above the equilibrium price. So let's say price ceiling of $5 a gallon. So we're saying the price can't go above $5 a gallon. Our equilibrium point is below that, so nothing's going to change unless we were to have some shifts in our supply or demand curve. So let's say that we had a, an increase in our demand. So uh, curve A shifted over to curve Z, maybe because our population increased. And let's say that we also had a shift in our supply curve to the left. So we go from curve B to curve D. Um, let's say that, you know, again, like we said before, maybe there's some um, farms that go out of business, some dairy farms that close. Um, you're going to have a, a lower supply at every possible price. So after the increase in demand and the increase in supply, now the equilibrium price should be $6 a gallon because that's where curve Z and curve D intersect. Uh, but again, since the if the government had a price ceiling of five dollars a gallon, now that's going to affect us, and it's go in and in this case, it's going to cause a shortage. Um, yeah, that's about it for the the supply and demand curves, how they interact. If you have any questions about uh, this as you're working on your assignment, feel free to get a hold of me.